Hello everyone, welcome to Mark One Design EMC channel. Just now we released a new video talking about how to uh, set up a vision setup and then how to use spectral analyzer. And then immediately when once we uploaded the video, we got a question from Remy, who's actually a, a, an old friend of Mac One Design, I would say, and he asked some very constructive questions. And these questions are really, really great questions. And I think, okay, while we're making videos, let's just try to use this video to answer the questions he asked, okay? So um, I got his questions showing on my pad. So the first question he said, instead of using the power cables um, with ferrites, could we use coaxial shielded cable? Okay, that's the first question. Second question, he asked about the potential coupling from the environment to the wiring. And then the third question, he asked about the ground connection to the lizard setup. And in the end, he asked something about the uh, units we use if we were using a uh, magnetic or electric uh, field uh, probe. Okay, so in the next few minutes, we're trying to again use uh, the same setup to answer all these questions. In fact, this, uh, this is a great practice. I would encourage all of um, all friends of Mac One Design, if you have any questions, please leave, a, leave us a message either on our YouTube channel or uh, directly send us an email. We will gather all your questions. And if I have time, I will try to uh, make a video out of your question and perhaps also mention your name. So I think it's a good opportunity to really interact with friends of Mac One Design. Okay, let's do it. As you can see, now the setup is almost the same as before, except that we removed the uh, high-pass filter. So now we we see more in terms of noise, right? So as you can see, still our ambient noise is not that high. As you can see, we have some spurious, but that's it. Um, that is because, as you can see here, if I go to amplitude again, and we, we basically put the input attenuator at zero dB, but if I go to RF preamplifier, currently the preamplifier is selected as off. So if I select on, what's going to happen? You can see now the preamplifier, sorry, preamplifier is on. Immediately you can see the noise picking up by the spectral analyzer. As we explained, if you enable the RF preamplifier, the receiver all of a sudden becomes much more sensitive. Therefore, now you can actually see the ambient noise being picked up. So where does this ambient noise come from? So it could be, as you can see here, our it's, it's getting dark, it's 6.25 in the UK, now it's winter time, so we actually have the um, LED lights on. So could it be the noise coming from the LED? Let's find out. So if I do um, trace here, and we, we basically uh, freeze this trace, okay, as it is, and then we use uh, another trace, trace two, to see the impact of the LED lights. So I'm going to, uh, to switch off the lights and see what happens. As you can see now, the lights are completely off, but the noise is m more or less the same, which indicates, you know, the LED lights are good quality. They don't really radiate much. Okay, that's a good sign. So at least we can, you know, switch the lights back on again. So it is not the radiation from the LED lights. Where, where it could be? Well, it could be anything, right, in this, in this setup. Bear in mind, I have all the uh, electronics devices here, so let me switch off the, uh, the charger to the laptop, and I'll switch off the uh, monitor here. Still, the noise is very stable, so I guess this ambient noise is just the ambient um, in this environment, which perhaps is very difficult to eliminate, okay? So that's the hard fact here. These are the ambient noise, and here we also have some uh, high uh, amplitude uh, spikes here. But I know which uh, um, signals are these. These are basically the local BBC radio transmitters. Uh, we know which sits often in a 90, 100 megahertz range, whereas this is perhaps just uh, the electronics de uh, devices in neighborhoods and things like that, okay? Let's, let's explore more about ambient noise. As you can see here, this is the ambient noise for now. Now I'm going to plug in a very noisy LED lamp, which is the lamp we always use for uh, our radiative emission demonstration. So now I'm going to plug this in, right? And I'm not even switching it uh, on. Now you see the spectrum analyzer 
picked up lots of noise simply uh, because the LED lamp just uh, just plugged in, not even switched on. And look at this noise. This is clearly a much larger in amplitude and wider in frequency. And especially in the lower frequency range, you can see it's actually doing some sweep sweeping here. And clearly, if you are going to test this board's performance, this is a big problem. And another question is, can we put more ferrite? Because here we only use 75 material. Can we put more ferrite and then expecting the noise to be less? Let's try to, 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 to find out. So if now, again, I'm using this one and freeze it, and then I'm use, using the third trace. So here I have a 31 material, uh, which is often quite good in terms of the higher frequency suppression. And I put two turn on this wire. I have another one I'll put in here. Look, it just, it doesn't do much. And now the noise is way big and it's actually hitting the ADC limit of this spectrum analyzer. So I have to disconnect it just to protect the uh, RF input of the spectrum analyzer. So by putting more ferrite on this doesn't help this um, ambient noise. So why? Because if you look at the setup, this cable here, we already protected by putting so many ferrites. Looking at the test setup here, these wires are actually short enough. These wires are also short. But look at here, where we have the meter to really just measure the current going through the unit, even though the fact that this is not actually working. None of this is working, right? Because we are just trying to measure the ambience. The power supply unit is not even on. But look at the cables here. This is a much longer cable. So it could be this cable actually acts as a more efficient antenna and causing problems. Well, let's find out if I disconnect this. So now this cable is off the circuit. We still have this uh, configuration. And now let's put it back to see the impact. So now it's back. Now at least it doesn't give you the over the limit error. And as you can see here, the blue trace actually is a lot less. Well, I wouldn't say a lot less, but it's less than the pink trace. So as we said, so that long cable must have coupled noise. So what about we disconnect this cable then? Will that couple noise? Yes, as you can see, now the noise dropped even further. How about this wires, if I disconnect here? Now it's even less, okay? So clearly, as you can see, because we have a very strong emitter nearby, all these cables could potentially pick up uh, ambient noise and causing problems. So really, if you don't have a tent as we, we have it here, then you probably will need to find out which is your strongest emitter, and then simply kill the emitter. Once we kill the emitter, the ambient noise is much less. Okay. So the next question is, um, how are we connecting the listen ground or listen, uh, yeah, listen ground to the ground plane? Well, as you can see here, I, I actually use a very narrow ground plane just for this demonstration. Normally, I would use a wider uh, ground plane. And for this setup, because it's a DC powered product, this plane actually is not grounded to earth. And sometimes the reason for that is sometimes in, in, in your setup, if you ground the, um, the ground plane to earth, depends on how clean that earth wire is. Because sometimes that earth wire, because it's a long wire, can actually act as a receiving antenna and picking up a lot of noise into the ground plane. So actually contaminate the, the ground plane. So that's why for test setup such as this, which is you know low voltage DC setup, I wouldn't recommend connecting the ground plane to earth. However, if you are testing a high voltage product, DC product or AC product, safety is always the first. So for safety reasons, we always need to um, earth the ground plane. So that's the second question answered.
Okay, so now the last question. When I'm using, a, say, a magnetic field loop, okay, in this case, a magnetic field loop, and I'm trying to do some near field probing, as you can see here, I place the uh, field loop over the PCB and I see the noise. Does it matter whether it is showing in dB microvolts or dB microamps? I would say it doesn't matter because often when you are sniffing a PCB, you want it to you want to get a, a an idea of the profile. Not really uh, interested in in the value showing here because you can't really uh, derive any value from this value. It really depends on the you know the distance and lots of factors. So I wouldn't be too bothered about if I use a magnetic field loop. I'm showing dB microvolts or dB microamps, doesn't really matter in this case, okay?